to Matthew chapter 27. Matthew chapter 27. Amen, amen. Matthew chapter 27. I still hear a few rustling of some pages. We'll give you a few more seconds to get there. Matthew chapter 27, very first book of the New Testament, first of the Synoptic Gospels. And uh, we're going to read there in verse 31. Matthew 27 and verse 31 and verse 32. We'll read those few verses. And uh, with the Lord's help, we will preach. Matthew 27 and 31. And if you're there, just give me a good amen. All right, most of you are there with me. Matthew 27 and verse 31 says this, And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him and put, on him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. You also find very similar writings in Mark chapter 15, verses 20 and 21. But that last verse, verse 32, And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name, him they compelled to bear his cross. Amen. I want to preach to you today just for a few moments on you cannot carry your own cross. You cannot carry... Your own cross. And I know that maybe it must sound sacrilegious at first, but we're going to preach today with God's help. I want you to understand today that everybody in this room today, everybody here, we are called and commanded, and we're going to talk about this. God's called and commanded all of us to take up our cross and follow Him. We all know that, don't we? Amen. But we also have to understand that you, in your own ability and in your own strength, you are not able to bear your own cross. So we're going to pray and we're going to ask God just to have His way and just this message today. And I just need His anointing and I would that you give me your undivided attention. Just pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we are asking You to help us today, dear Jesus. Father, every time I'm out this pulpit, God, I trust I have found the mind of God for this congregation. I strive not and try not to, Lord, to take things lightly. I know there's needs in this building. Lord, and I know every service is critical. It could be today, dear Father, there's somebody in this very room. It could be somebody underneath the sound of my voice. This could be their last service here. I don't know, dear Father. And there may be somebody here today, God, at that breaking point, Lord, where they feel the bondage and the pressures, Lord, and the oppression of this world. God, let them understand there's one that has strength and ability to sustain them, God, to help them. I would you anoint me, Father, regardless of anything, God, I need your anointing. And I would, God, that you would get the glory. Hide me behind the cross, Lord, that you'll get the glory for this. In Jesus' name, we do love you. Amen and amen. You cannot carry your own cross. We would understand today that it's very true that Jesus said to his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and to do what? And to follow me. We'll find that, that this command is written throughout Scripture a few different times. And I want you to understand that this, this was not an option, but this this was a command to every single believer that was going to enter into the kingdom. When you get saved, it will not, will not be long that you're going to hear the beckoning call of Christ in your life that tells you, you need to pick up your cross and you need to follow me. My friend, today we would understand this, that Jesus never made this an option. He says in Matthew chapter 10 and 38, And he that taketh not his cross and follows after me is not worthy of me. And then we find in Luke 14 and 27, it says, And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So instantly when we study the Word of God and this idea of bearing our cross and following Jesus, instantly the Bible tells us that if you do not pick up your cross, you are not worthy of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's number one. I don't know about you today, my friend, but I want to be worthy of The only way we can be made worthy of Him is when we do His will and do His beckon and calling our lives. But then he goes on to tell us that whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. My friend, to 
today, discipleship is something that's almost a lost art inside the house of God. We hear people say all the time, well, I'm saved or well, I'm born again. But let me ask you a question today. Are you a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ? A pupil, so as the Bible says, say, have you come underneath the yoke of the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you learned of Him? Do you know what He wants you to do in your life? I'm telling you today, salvation, as I mentioned many other times here before, salvation has got to be more than just forgiveness in your life. If all you know today is Jesus Christ as the one that forgave you, and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior of your life, not only is the Savior, but the Lord of your life, I'm telling you, you are not a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. But man, you've got to learn to come underneath His yoke. You've got to learn to come underneath His burden. You've got to learn to pick up that cross, and you have to learn as well as I do. And thank God that grace is teaching us every day and progressing us and propelling us forward in the kingdom of God. But I'm glad to know today that Jesus has given me the privilege and the opportunity to take up our cross and follow Him. I'm going to ask you the question before we get into the message. Number one, this message is for you today. Have you taken up your cross and are you following the Lord Jesus Christ? My friend, taking up your cross is more than just coming to church once a week. Come on. Come and take it up your cross is more than just coming to Wednesday night Bible study. But take it up your cross, my friend. You cannot disconnect the believer from his cross. I'm talking about when he goes to the job, you're going to hear of his cross. When he goes to Tuesday, when he goes to the grocery store, he or she, you're going to see that cross on the shoulder. My friend, we are called to take up our cross. And notice this, it's just take up his cross, referring to an individual cross that each person must bear in this church today. You've got to take up your cross and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Another thing we must understand about this, we know the command to take up the cross, but now we've got to understand the significance of the cross. We would understand at that time that the Jews at that time would understand what a cross was. It was a Roman art of torture and execution at that time. And you would understand that when Jesus said something like this, take up your cross and follow me, this would have sounded like something completely crazy to those he was talking to. It was almost like my friend as he's looking there and if he was to say that in a crowd of people he would say take up your cross and follow me. Instantly everybody would have been like that just sounds a little silly doesn't it? Now let's understand this because here in America we know a cross is something you put around your neck or in your ear. That's what the cross has been dumbing down to in America. A piece of jewelry. But in that time let me tell you what it would have been equivalent to to wear a cross around your neck. Can you imagine if you seen somebody there with an execution or electric chair around their neck? Walking around, say, what you got on your neck? No, it's just an electric chair. That's all it is. You know, they kill people on these. You know, they used to. And they walk around with a needle. This is the lethal injection one, you know. This is how we do our punishments. That's what it sounded like in those days. Equivalent to that time, it almost been like to take up your electric chair and follow Jesus. Not saying just exactly, but that's how silly it would have sounded to them. It was a sign of reproach. It was a sign of something that was detestable in those times. And I would say this is where I'm on the subject. If all you could do is put a cross around your neck and show you're a Christian, it ought to be something in your character. It ought to be something in your being. It ought to be something in your conversation. So you don't need jewelry necessarily to say that you are a Christian. I'll tell you the cross is something that's more than jewelry. It's something you've got to take up every single day. It represents, my friend, the reproach. It represents something at time. Something you didn't want to wear. It was something you wanted to stay away from. Even when you studied through that, it was a shame for a Jew to even be a hung on a tree. So understand this. What was Jesus saying when He said to take up your cross and to follow me? He was saying this, that when you pick up your cross, and this is a picture of reproach and a burden and shame and follow Him. How many knows today that being a Christian is really, my friend, nowadays people say they're Christians all the time and they never bear any reproach. My friend, as a Christian, you ought to be, and I'm not saying you have to, God gives us seasons of peace, and He gives us seasons and times of, a, of reprieve there. But my friend, being a Christian, you are going to bear the reproach of this world. They're going to look at you and they're going to say that you are different. They're not going to want the sinners are not going to always want to be around you. Yes, there may be times you can witness, my friend, but when you say you are a Christian, and you mean that from a radical perspective, that you are giving everything to Jesus, this world world will not like you. Why do we think we are better than our Savior? What did the world do to Him? They killed Him. 
And my friend, today we've got to understand, we need young women, young men and young women. We need middle-aged people, middle and adults and, and seniors. We need men and women to bear down their knees. We need them to pick up their cross. And we need them to once again bear the reproach of this gospel. My friend, this is what we're called to do. If you're saved here today and you don't have your cross on your shoulder, you need to analyze your life. But if you are saved here today and you're bearing that required cross and that reproach, I'm telling you this. There's going to be a day of reckoning and even though the world may mock you now, there's one day you'll lay down your cross and you'll put on a crown. It's going to be worth it if you endure, if you keep the cross on your shoulder, every bit of reproach, every time that you're mocked, every time that you're ridiculed. I'm telling you, friend, it's going to be worth it one day because the tables are going to turn. And I'll tell you, my friend, we'll even be judging this world if you bear your cross as you're living right now. My friends, it's amazing how the world, when they see the fruits of Christianity, they love the fruits of it. They love what it produces. But they do not like the radical format of it. They do not like the idea of bearing the reproach of the gospel. Now notice this today. Now that we know we're called to bear a cross, my friends, we've got to understand something else about the Lord Jesus Christ. And notice this is going to almost sound sacrilegious at first, but please just bear with me for a few moments. We know that when Jesus was mocked there, and when they put that cross upon His shoulder, this is the truth today we've got to understand. Jesus Himself could not carry His own cross. That almost sounds sacrilegious. But we read in the story, it doesn't give us the, the format. I know people try to portray it in different ways. But from somewhere where that cross was laid on his shoulder, or if they did it in the very beginning, we don't know. Could it be, my friends, can you get a picture of Jesus laying there on a cobblestone street, his face down in the dust, as there that cross is there? Can you imagine? I, we don't know exactly how it all may have happened. But can you imagine as they try to prop him up, maybe? Try to lay the cross on his back. Can you imagine what it would have been like? And some of the soldiers maybe were kicking him and telling him to get up. And there Jesus is. He's down on one knee or maybe flat on his face, prostrate. And there it is. They're trying to lay a cross on his back that he cannot bear, even in his own physical ability. We know there was somewhere between there there to that road to, to, to Golgotha. He could not carry his own cross. Jesus was there. We, we don't understand everything about it. It doesn't give us all the details. But we do know this. Most likely he was so weary and exhausted, he was unable to. Go another step. Now, aren't you glad? Now, I don't know about you. It's a good thing that Jesus relates with us, relates with us in all areas. Because I, too, my friends, at times, have felt that it was very difficult to take the next step. Has anybody ever been there? You know what God wants you to do. You knew the, the life that God was calling you to live. And you have family maybe that didn't understand it. Or they didn't understand you. Or even your own self, you're wrestling within yourself. And you're picking up that cross, my friend. And you're beginning to try to walk with that cross. And I'm telling you, my friend, it almost seems like times, brothers and sisters, without exaggerating spiritually here. I'm telling you, there was times, Brother Glenn, I felt like I could not take another step. I felt like the weariness, the mind battles, the mental battles that were going on, the struggle I was trying to do the will of God. People maybe it did something in other areas. And I was trying to obey the Lord and do His will. And I had people that would say things. And my friend, one more step seemed like it was almost unbearable in my mind. I'd lay on my face and weep tears. I'd cry those bitter tears. I'd ask for it. I don't understand everything. But I'm telling you, my friend, every time I went to take another step, I felt a strength come from another world. That man by the name of Jesus, He'll help you bear your cross. He knows your breaking point. I'm telling you, friend, you can't do it on your own. Jesus didn't do it and you can't either. Amen. Listen to me. Because sometimes these are subjects we tend to avoid. Because we almost feel like self can help us carry the cross. I almost feel like at times maybe Derek can do something to carry the cross. Lord, I'll do your will. And only to pick the cross up. Only to lose stamina before it's too long. That's what the Bible says. We are to deny. To deny who? We are to deny ourselves. Ourselves. That's not just talking about material things. That's talking about self-empowerment. That's talking about self-will. That's talking about everything about self has to go. I cannot I do it in my own strength. It's going to take the Lord Jesus. I cannot do it, Lord. The reproach, the burden is too great. But I'm telling you, my friend, with His help, 
you can. But you know what we have issues with nowadays? As soon as the going gets tough, the old saying is, we have people saying, well, maybe this cross, it's not really worth it right now. I'm going to lay it down. I'll come back later, Lord. Let me go get a time of reprieve. And so I believe throughout the head of the church of God, throughout the world, I'm telling you there's men and women in America that have laid their cross down years ago and they're not near as effective as God wants them to be. They've fallen into a state of disobedience will eventually make you lose out doing the things of God. I'm telling you, my friend, you've got to make sure you're picking up the cross and no matter how heavy it gets, no matter how much you've got to cry, no matter how much you've got to sweat, you've got to press on and persevere, pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Jesus. We have trouble picking up our cross and getting to church. Come on now. Feel like sometimes, some of you sleeping on me, that's all right. But sometimes it feels right. You pick that cross up, we feel like we go to church with it. We take it on and lay it down. No, no, sir. You've got to pick it up every day of the week. I'm telling you, you've got to pick up your cross and follow Jesus. Quit divorcing your cross from your Christianity. I've I, I seen an illustration one time I thought it was very effective and unique. It showed a bunch, it, it, was a, it was a great wilderness of people walking. And they were showing these men and women carrying their crosses. And as they were carrying their crosses, it showed one man. He put it down and said, Lord, it's just too heavy. It's just too heavy, Lord. I can't go another step. So the man had a soul in his hand. And he said, can I just cut a little bit of the cross off? And so he goes down to the foot of the cross and he props it up. He begins to saw just a little bit of it off again. And he picks it back up. It's still dragging behind him. And he says, it isn't too far or too much longer. He says, Lord, it's lighter than what it was. But Lord, it's still too heavy. So he props it up again. And he begins to saw off a little bit more at a time. Eventually he looked at his cross and he was carrying it on his shoulder. No longer. It wasn't, it wasn't long enough on the back to be dragging the ground anymore. And finally he comes to a giant enormous ravine out in the middle of the desert. And somebody walks beside him and he pulls up and he walks up to that big, that big gap in that big ravine. He looks at it and says, I can't get across there. How can I get across there? And all of a sudden, one of his neighbors came up who had carried the cross. They may not have got there before he did, but he was dragging that cross. And that man took that cross and he laid it across that ravine. And you see that man balance his way across it. And when that other man tried to lean his cross across and across the ravine there, it was too short. I'm telling you, my friend, quit trying to cut God short at times. There's times that reproach in your life. There's times that trial in your life. It could be helping you to jump over the mountain that's in front of you. It could be the very thing that will get you through the future. Carry your cross because that cross is your deliverance. It's your deliverance, church. What are you going to do when you lay down the reproach? I'll tell you what Jesus said. If you're ashamed of me now, I'll be ashamed of you later. I'm telling you from the youngest teenagers, everybody listen to me. You say, if I live that way, they're going to pick on me at school. Let them pick. They picked on Jesus. I'm not saying it's easy. I know the reproach is heavy. I'm not saying you'll never shed a tear. But from the adults to the youngest, my friend, we've got to be willing to, to pick up our cause. But what we can draw comfort from today is this, that everybody has a breaking point. <laughs> I flirted with that a few times and wish I didn't. You look at this today. The truth is, Jesus was too weak and too frail to carry His cross. It was laid on another's shoulder. He reached the end of His endurance. He was physically broken and a wounded man. And the only thing that could do is somebody had to come help Him. Jesus could not get up and carry that cross. You read it. That's what it's saying. The Son of God had that breaking point physically. You had that breaking point physically and spiritually as well. Do you know sometimes, and I, I've read statistics before, but discouragement and depression, even in the house of God, even though it should not be, it is, it's way up there, friends. There's people that are on the verge of a breakdown, even in the house of God. And the reason that they live life this way is because you're trying to carry the cross yourself. My friend, it says here that they compel one Simon to help pick up the cross. My friend, you have to get this. We have to draw comfort from this. If you want to identify with Jesus' crucifixion, you've got to identify with the steps to the crucifixion.
And to the steps of the crucifixion, we find Jesus laying there, unable to pick up His cross, my friend. I'm telling you the hidden truth here that we need to uncover is this. What it means to us today is that Jesus, who is touched by the feelings of our infirmities, must have experienced from Himself what it was like to be weak, discouraged, unable to go on without help. He was in all points tempted just like you. Couldn't go another step. I know this is a secular example, but believe it or not, I used to work out. I knew that enough. I remember in high school, we'd we get to the place in strength training. And I'm telling you, I remember one time I finally, I'd taken enough protein milk, and I'm telling you, friends, I, I drank everything I could drink to get to that max, and find out that it's nothing compared to some, but 245 pounds. I'm telling you, I thought that was the most weight in the world at that time. I remember getting up. All you had to do it was one time. I'm telling you, one time. I tried it one time and couldn't get it. I am mean, stayed there on my chest, I had to pick it up off of me. I tried again. And I'm telling you, I pushed that thing up off that rack. I pulled it down. I arched my back. I shoved as hard as I could. My eyes were closed. And I got it. It was almost like midway. And I was struggling and a grunt. And I know I didn't make no pretty face, I'm sure. I was just a shoving and a grunt. And all of a sudden, I felt it. I pushed it. I felt it go all the way up. Only to look up and notice that somebody else had their hand on it helping me. It was called two fingers. We would take two fingers and put it underneath the bar and we just tap it. But that little bit really helped. I'm telling you, friends, you may get to the place spiritually where you cannot go another step. And you may close your eyes and you may take another step and maybe you feel just that little bit of strength pushing you forward. I'm telling you today what God's wanting to do for somebody here today. You feel like you're maxed out. You feel like you can't go another inch. But I'm telling you, I'm telling the Spirit of God's wanting to come by. He's wanting to push you a little bit further. He's wanting to help you go and do what you need to do. But the temptation is always self-sufficiency. That's our temptation as humans. I can, Lord, let me try again on my own. God didn't want you to do it on your own. The best place for you to be is on your face in the dirt, spiritually speaking. Dust all around you. Sweat running down your brow. And finally, when you say to your place, I can't do it. And Jesus said, I know you can't. I didn't. And I did it for a reason to show you that others will help you. Now, let me put this in here. I know that Jesus, if He wanted to, He could have made that cross light as a feather. I know the Heavenly Father could have levitated levitated it to Golgotha. But I'm telling you, He allowed Himself to come underneath a burden He could not bear. My friend, to show us something that is through your weakness, that the Lord is strong. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 13 and 4, For for though He was crucified through weakness, yet He lived by the power of God. You've got to live in weakness, but live in the power. I want God. Look at God and say, I can't do it. He'll tell you, I know you can't. And it shouldn't have took you six years to find out you couldn't. I've learned a lot sooner. Now, when I first got saved, believe me, I, I try to muscle my way through a few things. Only to end up on the other side so discouraged and so weak spiritually. And I'd get down and pray and I felt like God just take care of it in a second. And I know sometimes in those struggles, maturity is birthed in our lives. I know that. But I want to tell you this, there's a lot more, more times than any now, I find myself giving it to God earlier than I do later. Because I understand now when anything, you said I have a mind battle and I'd hold on to it and try to fight it out and fast. Nowadays, if I'm wrong about something, I'll just get on my knees and say, God, I'm wrong. He'll say, I know you were. And He'll help you. That's the beauty of this. God's power through your weakness. The Bible says, I take pleasure in affirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And I'm telling you, my friend, His grace is sufficient for you. I want to say this, and I won't be too much longer. Jesus never forces a cross on us. If you are crossless today, It's because you have not picked it up. He's never going to drag you somewhere. My dad used to do that with some yard work. I don't know if you ever... (laughs) I see some dads out there smiling. Dad grabbed me by my ear. I'm like, oh, ouch, ouch. I'm going to get the yard work up my hand, shove it in my hand. I told you to get the leaves up, son. Now do it! Okay. (laughs) But God's never going to drag you by your ear somewhere and say, pick up your cross right now. 
God's not trying to draft you. He wants you to volunteer. God's not trying to draft you. But everything in this kingdom of God, brothers and sisters, it's my reasonable service. I come to church because it's my reasonable service. I pay my tithes because it's my reasonable service. And I love Him. Everything we do is a reasonable service. Even bearing the approach of the gospel, it is reasonable to do so. Where's your cross at? That's my question. Brother Derek, have you ever laid your cross down? Oh, I'm sure I have. But every time I would get down to pray, say I walked a hundred miles, spiritually speaking, I get down to pray, I end up walking a hundred more back, picking up my cross and say, I wish I carried it the first time. God's going to teach you lessons. Maybe you pick, maybe you got your cross, but all of a sudden something hits you and you feel unforgiveness trying to wrestle in your spirit, so you lay it down and you start walking. I ain't, ain't no need carrying it right now. God will take you back, make you forgive, pick your cross back up and get you back on the road. That's how God works. God wants you to carry your cross. Not all believers today, my friend, hear me. I dare say many believers do not carry their cross, but I want us to understand one more thing. God's cross for your life is a symbol of of love. Jesus bore His cross, guess for who? For me and you. And we must understand this today. I want you to get this point. I don't want you to get weary here. Jesus had, when He was on the road, Jesus had Simon the Cyrene help pick up His cross. But I want to tell you today, we don't have Simon. We have a Savior. We don't have Simon. And we have a Savior. I don't know how big Simon was. I don't know how many muscles he had. But I know this. The one that's going to help you pick up your cross is far stronger than any other human being in this world. I want you to capture this today. The Bible says this. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he hath no other to help him get up. How long are you going to lay in the dust with your trials? How long will you grovel in the cobblestone streets? I'm telling you, two is better than one, the Bible says, and that ain't brain science. Two is better than one. Where's Jesus at in your life? If you're a sinner here today, look, you're going to bear reproaches and ain't got nothing to do with the cross. You're going to bear your own sins. But I want to tell you, there were sins already been bore for you at Calvary. And God wants you to do mighty things if you will just let Him. We're not going to be much longer as my wife goes go to the piano. I want you to understand this today. Everybody give me your attention. Jesus knows your breaking point. Jesus knows your breaking point. Has anybody ever, I've already asked this, but anybody ever had a breaking point in life? We've got one person this whole bit. We are living among the saints, surely. Two. When the saints go marching in, brother, we're going to, I'm right in the number right here. I've had a breaking point. Amen. Amen. Had breaking points in life. And when I begin to pray about it, I begin to say, Lord, I cannot do anything about this. And all of a sudden, I will feel a strength come into my life. And I know who it is. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to understand the Bible tells us that we are not alone. That we have one, an advocate with the Father, that will help us carry our cross. But I'm going to ask you the question today, my friend. I, and I was studying this. This came to my mind. Are you even to the place when we study the Bible and we understand that Jesus knows everything that we face and everything that we ever go through and the Bible says to cast all of our cares upon Him? Do you understand that that word cast there, it actually means throw it at Him? It means to actually fling it at Him. Your cares, your battles, you're not to carry it alone. Jesus Christ will help you carry your burdens. You say, Brother Derek, that sounds elementary. Live it. Live it. Live it. Live it. It isn't God's intention for you to pray through every three months. He wants you to pray through every day and give it to Him. How do you carry your cross? I'll tell you how you carry your cross. You pray through every day. You put it on your shoulder. And you walk. If you would stand to your feet. Jesus, help us today, Holy Ghost.